Hindustani music today includes a strong presence of a variety of instruments in solo performances. That is, uh, we have the sitar, sarod, bansuri or flute, santur, uh, all of these that are quite prominent on the scene. Now, a variety of musical instruments are discussed in uh, music texts through the centuries. You can also see them in sculptures, paintings and uh, descriptions are found in literary works too. The Natya Shastra offers a very um, interesting and quite viable classification of instruments based on the principle of how sound is produced. And uh, nearly two millennia later, Zaks and Hornbostel, they came up with a system that is now globally followed, uh, which follows the same idea, the same principle of classification. So what are the various ways in which uh, musical instruments make sound? It is all sound is vibration. So uh, we could have uh, music that is made by a vibrating string. This uh, is called, this cl class of instruments uh, is called Tatavadya in the Natya Shastra. Uh, and these include both plucked string instruments and bowed string instruments. So you have sitar, uh, sarod, which are plucked. Right? The guitar also is a plucked instrument, whereas uh, violin, sarangi, these are bowed. Uh, there, there are other instruments like uh, the bean, uh, surbahar, surshringa, these are uh, very rarely performed today. The second class of instruments is uh, Sushiravadya, where the, we have a vibrating column of air. So you have the flute, obviously the shehenai, even the harmonium, uh, which we have seen earlier. The third class of instruments is called Avanadha. A membrane of phone is uh, under the Zaks horn postal system. Uh, the Shushiravadya are called aerophones. Uh, string instruments are the Tatavadya are called uh, chordophones. So this, the third class, third category of instruments is called Avanatha or membrane of phone where a membrane is pulled tight over something and that is the vibrating uh, substance. And that is how uh, music is made. So, tabla, pakhavaj, etc. would fall under this category. And then you have a solid surface, which is the vibrating substance. And these are called ghanavatya. Uh, obvious examples are the symbols. the tala. So, now broadly, in terms of their roles, <laughs> Uh, we can speak of two kinds of instruments, melodic and percussive. Melodic instruments are those on which ragas are performed, while percussive instruments for our purposes are really two, tabla and pakhavaj, which serve as percussive accompaniment. And this lesson is about melodic instruments. Now, instrumental music is regarded as separate genre in Hindustani music because it has its own repertoire and also method of presentation. Um, in Carnatic music, in contrast, we do not have a separate repertoire of compositions or even a presentational model for instrumental music. So, uh, instrumental music has its own uh, standing, so to say. But nevertheless, it does draw from the vocal genres, vocal styles of Dhrupad and uh, Khayal. And it also uh, draws from vocal music in other ways. And this is acknowledged in the distinction between what is called Tantkari and the Gaiki Ang. Uh, now, Gaiki Ang. Uh, and this has been explained earlier. Uh, this is modeled on vocal styles, on 
the way of the voice trying to bring uh, to express on the instrument the to bring the expression of the human voice on an instrument to, to bring out those nuances mera stantkari is uh, playing the instrument in such a way that it exploits the possibilities of that instrument each instrument has its possibilities it has its limitations but there are unique possibilities of each instrument and tantkari uh, really exploits those uh instrumental music in hindustani music is a heady uh, mix of these two approaches to music making and uh, there are famous rivalries over the superiority of the one or the other approach that is the gayaki and the tantkari so do uh instrumental music has its own story uh, has its own repertoire in way of presenting ragas it does draw from dhrupad and khayal it also borrows repertoire especially from khayal and uh, uh in in the manner of presenting raga it draws from the uh, from khayal and dhrupad so to give a Uh, an explanation uh, using the schema here we have uh, a stands for alap there is a uh, an extensive alap you have b standing for bandish c for bol laya or laikari it is only using rhythmic only performing rhythmic uh, patterns or creating rhythmic patterns using the text of the uh, composition and you have d which is other elements of improvisation such as bola lap taan bol taan sargam etc now when you have dhrupad in dhrupad uh, it progresses like this first you have a very extensive alap and uh, uh, you have already seen the kind of uh, alap that they uh, perform in dhrupad uh, from that after that it progresses to the uh, it progresses to the bandish the dhrupad or the dhamar or whatever it is and then after that you have bol laya or laikari that is using the text of the composition they perform rhythmic uh, variations and uh, rhythmic play now khayal uh, starts with a very short alap okay which i have not indicated here because it is not really an extensive alap it starts off with a very short introductory alap and then go launches into the bandish after which really the extensive alap follows it is it is in, it's, it's uh, incorporated into the avartans as we have seen it and the other elements of uh, improvisation including bol laya are also they are all performed after the bandish and how they are brought together as i said there is considerable uh, freedom and considerable uh, liberty that uh, the performer exercises in how he wants to bring these elements together now instrumental music uh, it draws from both these structures in that it first begins with the extensive alap in the dhrupad model so you have the alap jod jhala as it is called the the rhythmic pulsating kind of alap that is also uh, performed in the instrumental music uh, alap so uh, the alap of instrumental music is really the alap of dhrupad and then it performs the there is a and then it uh, progresses into the bandish the what is called gat after which within the avartan the other elements of improvisation including some alap these are brought together instrumental music as i said uh, draws from both the presentational style of dhrupad and khayal but uh, the overall idiom of the music that we hear in instruments like the sitar uh, sarod bansuri shehna etc this is predominantly the khayal angodi khayal voice uh, ornaments used 
the way phrases are constructed and then built upon uh, these are all derived from the Hayalang. But we can hear the Dhrupad Angen instruments that are now almost extinct like the uh, Surbahar or Surshringar which are the base counterparts of the Sitar and Sarod respectively. The Bean or the Rudra Bean is a full fledged Dhrupad Angen instrument. It is in fact it is belongs to the Dhrupad tradition celebrated uh, Dhrupad musicians like Zia Muhyuddin Dagar, Ustad Asad Ali Khan, uh, they have been brilliant performers of this instrument in the last century. And today, uh, Bahauddin Dagar of the Dagar family carries on the legacy of bean playing. Let us listen to a short uh, clip of uh, Ustad Asad Ali Khan playing bean plus. I uh, thank uh, Karsten Vicker for permission to use uh, this clip. He is himself a musician and plays the Rudra Bean. <laughs> Please uh, see the links below in the description box for more uh, music of the Rudra Bean. Uh, the music of the Bean has a depth and gravitas that is not found easily elsewhere. So the Bean and the Flute, the Bansuri, are perhaps the most ancient among today's instruments heard in uh, classical music. Some instruments that we hear in classical music today found their way from other uh, spaces, instruments such as the santur. They are folk instruments in origin. Santur is a Kashmiri folk instrument and uh, it uh, found a place for itself in Hindustani music because of the artistry and the sheer brilliance of Pandit Shiv Kumar Sharma who single-handedly brought prestige and acceptance to this instrument in the world of classical music. Let us watch a clip of Santur performance.
similarly the bansri or flute too which is it's an ancient instrument but it was one musician who uh, propelled it into the classical music arena and that was pandit panalal ghosh then the flute uh, typically before panal before pandit ghosh the flute uh, was it was a foot long uh, instrument high pitched and that wasn't appropriate for creating the serious music of uh, hindustani music so pandit ghosh created a long flute with a large diameter to be able to produce the mellow and dignified sound of uh, hindustani music uh, thereby bringing depth and seriousness to the music um, i'm going to play a short clip from a house concert um, this will also give you an idea of uh, patronage of music at uh, various levels of course we have uh, classical music concerts in big auditoria in all kinds of uh, venues but a closed chamber setting is still the best way to experience indian classical music we have big auditoria with uh, stages that are isolated take away the element of interaction with the audience which is important for this music because this music unfolds to through creating tension and resolving it in every avartan and when the musician knows that the audience is with her and is she's the audience is getting what she is doing that makes for inspiration and for inspired music The Shehnai too has an interesting story. It's primarily a mangala vadya, that is, an instrument that is played on auspicious occasions such as marriages. Ustad Bismillah Khan uh, worked to give it a place in classical music. His sure artistry and command gave a, a new visibility to the Shehnai outside wedding halls.
a unique feature of instrumental music in India is that most musicians customize their instruments. These are not standardized. All instruments are handcrafted. Now we will take a look at the Sarod and the Sita. Then we have guest lecturers taking us through uh, some aspects of these instruments. The Sarod and Sita are both string instruments. They are plucked string instruments. The, as I have said, the other kind of string instruments are bowed, right? Violin, saringi, etc. But both sitar and sarod are plucked string instruments. And uh, as you listen to our guest lecturers, you will appreciate that though both are plucked string instruments, one of them, the sitar is fretted. There are frets while the sarod is unfretted. So, they present different challenges to uh, produce rak sangeet. How ornaments are played, how the continuity of the music is maintained, all this is uh, navigated in different ways. Dr. Supriya Shah, uh, who is also at the Benares Hindu University, talks about the sitar. Um, Dr. Shah refers to two kinds of sitar as uh, customized and used by two great musicians of the 20th century, Pandit Ravi Shankar and Ustad Vilayat Khan. Now, these instruments, it's the same sitar, but they, they differ in size, the number of strings, even the way the strings are tuned. And after Dr. Shah's lecture demonstration, let us also listen to Pandit Suresh Vyas as he talks about the sarod. <laughs> 